what that is. Hey, Jack. Hello, Kim. How you doing? I'm um, great. How about you? Good. Hi, Jesse. Hi. How's it How going? you doing? Good. It's starting to get the traffic is starting to give me pause. <laughs> So I thought I'd just zoom in today. Yeah, is it starting to get busy? Um, I'm starting to feel like it's busier out there yeah. on the roads. Yep. Is it nice there too? It's beautiful up here. Yeah, it's really nice today. Yeah. Is Linda going to show up today? Do you know? Who knows? I think, um, yeah, they said that I think Linda was available to come today. Did we get, Kim, did we get clean? Is, is Linda okay with all the stuff we decided at our last meeting? Yes. Yes. I did um, run the planning boundary by her and she was good with that. Okay. Um, so, yes. So, you've sent that to whoever it needs to be sent to or? We're close. Um, we're just waiting on one final review from I think Jeff and Tara. So as soon as they sign that off, then we're we're good okay. to send it over to Steve. Okay. Hi, you guys. Hello. Well, we have three here in the trailer. Most of yeah. you guys are on Zoom. I only see you and uh, Peter at the trailer. Yep. Just walked out. I'm not sure. <laughs> That bad already? Yeah. <laughs> oh, here comes Dave. 
great. There he is. And then I think I think Linda said that she was coming. Um, if she is not there, then I, I I'm not sure what your policy is for starting the meeting if somebody else starts. Well, Bill's the vice chair. Okay. I mean, if at five after, if she's not here, it's not fair to everybody to just sort of sit around and wait. Yeah. We'll just get started. <laughs> Do we have to have a minimum number of members to conduct a meeting? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I would say yes, but. What's our total? 10? We have 10? Nine. Nine. So Do we need five, five. people. We got five now, mm -hmm. don't we? Yep, we have five. We have a quorum. Great. I guess we want to, um, I was looking at your agenda, Kim. I think we want to talk about meeting schedule. And I had one thing that I just mentioned to Jeff before he <laughs> walked out. Um, that I think we should discuss. We're not going to do it today, but I think it's something we ought to do pretty soon if we're mm -hmm. if we want to be productive. Um, but I'll wait until Jeff gets back so I don't repeat myself. Okay, that works. And thanks everyone for the uh, patience with the meeting schedule. And hopefully we're. <laughs> moving in a better direction but I know that this is like oh, this meeting's a little off schedule from last week <laughs> and then next week is um a day off for hopefully everyone um I hope everyone's watching the marathon I will be <laughs> we had one originally scheduled for next week right yes and then it's a day off I know at least it's a day off for us at UMass Boston um and uh I think I think a number of you on the island too yeah, that holiday is officially only observed in Sussex County, <laughs> not Nantucket County. Um, oh, no. But people may have it off, or some people like me may have to work. Yeah. The town has it off, so. <clears throat> My calendar that has literally every possible holiday you could think of worldwide does not have Patriots Day. <laughs> the official holiday is actually called Evacuation Day. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you think? Should we get yeah, started? Why don't we get, don't we get started? Okay. Um, I think that um, why don't I just start off with what I was thinking of is that I'm I made a serious effort to try to go through. Excuse uh, me. Someone has to read the open meeting law preamble. Is that, does someone have that here? Yeah, Press Phil, it. you need to call the meeting to order as well. Yes. Uh, I don't have anything, the open meeting thing. Is, is it on your, is it on your back of your shab stuff? Um, no, it's no. not. Andy has it. Um, no, maybe Jeff will Jeff, have it. Jeff might have because that's what we did. I think we did last time. But I don't have the whatever you guys read. So when you, when it's a in the beginning of a meeting, you said oh, to call this meeting right. of the Harvard plan, blah blah blah. Um, name the the date. Um, okay. And yeah. Then, right. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then you know I don't know if it's something the committee wants to do, but. You know, you'll want to um, ask for an approval of the agenda, um, and and then when you get that uh, approval of the minutes, um, okay. Yeah, okay. you need a roll call of the members to establish a quorum as well. Yes. Now we have there are several people on this call that are, I guess you call ex officio that are not technical members of the committee, is that right? Um, if they're nine, yeah. members, if they're nine mem members, you just call everyone's name and say, and, and they say I, um, and then you, you know, call the staff, man, staff names and a 
Hopefully. Oh, here comes Linda. Okay, here. Great. So, so. We were just about to call the meeting to order, but since we have the chairwoman, oh. you've got all the language. Yeah. You have oh, to have no. with you the what you read for the open meeting law. You have to do that. I know. How many of these do you think I do a week? Well, you don't have the script, do you? I can pull it up. No, I don't have it handy. <laughs> I'm surprised they still make us read the script because they've extended it and it's a little bit different than what we had during the pandemic. Yes. Oh, oh, that's what, oh, great, thank you. Oh, goody. Thank you. So there was the one thing I was not printing off. Is, is, that this, the, is this the 60 page one? Uh, it's the one that can serve on Okay, because the one yeah. on my computer is 60 pages. I have it electronically. I have electronically, but it says 60. Awesome. I hate this thing. I'm going to have to just print it out and keep it in my briefcase. I'll bring one next time. Do you have a shortened one? Sadly, no. Uh, it's a matrix of, or the metrics rather for my standard for, for the scallops. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff there. Yeah. You know, I've worked on that for, I don't know, probably at least two or three months. But. Mm -hmm. Pretty short, pretty concise agenda today. It's got a lot of numbers and percentages and stuff that you don't normally see. No, there's some really interesting things on here. You don't have copies of the agenda for everybody, do you? No, but I can put it up. Okay. Yeah. Next time I'll do that. This is the agenda. Oh, I know it was short. I have it, but I don't know. I have it. Okay. I'm going to open the meeting. You're going to have to give me the membership list, which I did point out. We have so many members. I don't know how many we have here. I'll make it smaller once we get down. Okay. You can look on the screen. Agenda. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Public, petition pay, public participation guidelines. Members of the public wishing to participate in the meeting must use their full names for Zoom access. If full names are not used, people will not be allowed to participate in discussion. The town reserved the right to remove any member of the public from the meeting who doesn't use a full name or accent appropriately. Confirming member access. As a preliminary matter, this is the Nantucket Madiket Harbor Plan Committee meeting. Chair, support staff, etc. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, one line. This is what I need is the whole list because we have a large list. Jeff, do you have the whole list of um, members? No, but I'll put it together for you. Hold on, I have it, but it's lengthy. I never actually got the membership list. Go to the minutes that I sent out. It'll be on there. Yeah, I've got them on the uh, email feed too. Um, Jack Wigan? Uh, present. Okay, Steve Leinbach? Present. Uh, Tara Riley? Yeah. Okay, Seth Engelborg? Here. Peter Brace is in the room. Jesse Bell. Here. Bill Smith is in the room. Dave Franzuto is in the room. Emily Molden, we knew was going to be away. Correct? Yes. Samantha Danette. Stuart Duck, Alan Bartels. And Stephen McKenna. Here. Tara, Tara just dropped a chat in saying she's here. Okay, great. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Jeff Carlson. I'm here. 
is Will here? No, Will will not be here. Uh, but and anybody else? Kimberly? No, just there. And then Kim is here. Okay, Kim's here. Yes. Okay. Anticipated speakers on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative. Who do we have for speakers today? We have already affirmed all of them. Okay, those are the ones I already read. Introduction to remote meeting. Good morning. Good afternoon. This open meeting of the Nantucket and Manicot Harbor Plan Committee meeting, which come up with an acronym is being conducted remotely pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 that has to change because they just did it last yeah, week you should try and just get through it so we can okay we have to shorten this and change that ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law this meeting will not feature public comment for this meeting is convening by video conference via the Zoom app as posted on town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating, some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold your name to hold to your name as called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in, turn mine off. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. For items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. Finally, each vote taken at this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. So I would assume it's not on here that we have to establish a quorum. and accept the agenda. Those things should be at the very beginning. Okay, you wanna add those? Yeah, that's required well, for the meeting long. You established a quorum when you called people's names, but we do have to accept yeah, the we agenda. Have, we have to accept that. So no, somebody- approval of, approval of the minutes. Minutes, so we have to put minutes. We'll add minutes to the next. Quorum and uh, agenda approval. Peter, did you make a motion to approve the uh, agenda? Yes. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, Bill seconded. All those in favor? Peter? Aye. Dave? Aye. Phil? Aye. Okay, down the list again. You can read the names off the screen, Linda. Oh, I, can, I actually can see them. Steve? Aye. Seth? Aye. Jesse? Aye. Uh, do we have any other members up nope, there? Nope, that's it. Nope, that's it. Okay, and... Somebody want to make, anybody have any comments on the minutes? They're always well done by Peter. I move we accept them. Bill made a motion to accept the minutes as drafted. Is there a second? Second. Uh, was that Seth? Yes. Recognize your voice from the CONCOM. All those in favor? Uh, Steve? Aye. Seth? Aye. Uh, Jack? Jesse. No, Jesse. Hi. You disappear up there. And then jump around. Is that anybody else up there? Nope. Okay. Peter? Aye. Dave? Aye. Phil? Aye. And chairs aye. Okay. Yes. Welcome to Jeff Carlson and Tara Weasley. Well, I think in lieu of time, since we got a little bit of a slow car and have some things to take care of, um, just make sure everyone got their emails that are there. Um, and I guess I'll just turn it over to Kim to jump right into updates. Sure. Um, so thanks everyone for joining. I see Samantha's coming on now too. Um, so that's great. And um, so yes, yeah, so just a reminder, we did approve the planning boundary at the last meeting. And um, I did 
also check it with Linda, who wasn't able to be at that meeting, and um, she also approved it. So we are good with our planning boundaries. So it's a great first step. Um, we are going to be talking a little bit later just about planning for the first public meeting, which um, the timeline on that still is going to depend on the notice to proceed. But we're looking at hopefully maybe June, July for that first public meeting. And, and we'll go into some more detail in a little bit about our um, plan for that. Uh, I uh, apologize for all of the back and forth in terms of scheduling the meetings. Um, you guys are a busy bunch and uh, a lot of conflicting schedules, but I think what um, I was hoping for and wanted to double check with you all is looking at the first and the third Monday of each month. Now I realize that we're not on schedule for that for April um, and that things might get a little bit more complicated once summer comes, but at least I guess starting for May and June, looking at the first and third Monday of the month. Um, so does that work for everyone? And right now, um, Outlook, Outlook is um, very, difficult with if you're getting a number of meeting invites from me it's um the way that outlook does it because they end up kind of rescheduling some of the meetings so you might get some invitations that you have to accept or delete um i apologize for that in advance but um how, how does the first and the third monday look at least for may and june first for me fine for me okay great and with that being said, if there's a meeting that you can't make, um, we'll always have a recording of each meeting and the minutes so we can catch everyone up to date or I'm happy to also jump on the phone after the meeting if anybody wants to discuss what we went over. All right, we'll do that at least May and June and then reconvene and see how everybody's summer is looking. Um, and uh, Kristen and I will also be able to come out for some meetings probably starting in um, May. So in a, in a few weeks, we'll hope to get out for either that first meeting or the third meeting, um, or the, I'm sorry, the third week of May meeting. Okay, that was all that I had for um, updates in the meeting schedule. Any questions on that? Or I can also jump into um, the plan matrix. Yep. So are we meeting on the 24th of this month? Good question. That is, um, so yes, yeah, so we are not meeting on the 17th of April, as that is a holiday, hopefully for everyone, for most people. Um, would you guys like to meet on the 24th? Okay. And then again, on the, the first Monday of May, which I'm not sure what the date of that is, or do you want to just wait until the first Monday of May? Mm -hmm. Well, the first Monday of May, Peter, is the following Monday. Yeah, so let's wait first, let's wait till May 1. Okay. Is everybody all right with that? Unless we meet, unless we need to meet. Well, that'd be two weeks. That'd be two weeks in a row. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The 24th and then the all first. Right. Yeah. Okay. So everybody's okay. all right with May 1st, May baskets. <laughs> all right, great. We will stick with the first, uh, I think it is, yeah, May 1st. So first I'll, I'll make sure that that meeting invite is, is out there and on your calendars. Okay. All right, so that'll be May 1st and May 15th. And then in June, it will be June 5th and 19th. Yes. Okay, great. This, excuse uh, excuse me, Madam one, Chair. Hold on Seth, a second. Does this one o'clock time period still work for everybody? Yes. Okay. yes. All right, okay. Seth. Thank you, Madam Chair. June 19th is a holiday Juneteenth so that one will need to be rescheduled okay. as well I'm still not used to that one I'm used to the day but not as a national holiday all right so it'll be June 26th then does that work sure. okay yep. forgot about that okie dokie all right, so I'll adjust the um, calendar invites and make sure we get um, June 26th on there. Because you always have to check to see if this room is available anyway. 
Yes. There's a high probability I will not be able to do the 26, but I don't want to. I'll just watch it on Zoom. I mean, on uh, the recording. Okay. And you got to start thinking about July, guys, because the first Monday in July is the third, <laughs> which may be problematic just in general for some people. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kim, you're still up? Yes, I'm still on. All right. So um, first of all, I just wanted to thank Dave uh, Franzuto for going through the implementation matrix and um, looking at each item, which there are a lot of items on there, and um, making some notes as to if this has happened yet, if it's completed, not completed. Um, and so that is super helpful. I did circulate the um, matrix, which I'll also bring up on my screen, but I took some time to organize it a little bit. And um, here, I'll bring it up right now. Whoops. Okay. And so what I was thinking would be a good use of time here is to spend the next 20, 25 minutes going through probably one of these tabs. So maybe it would be natural resources and um, and going through and deciding if some of these items from each topic area should be included in the next plan and if we had modifications to make. Um, and so you can see in this matrix, I basically organized all of the items for each topic area. So topic areas down at the bottom. I organized them by if they were complete, if they were ongoing, or if they haven't been started yet. So um, really very few haven't been started yet. Majority of the items were either complete or ongoing items. And so basically wanting to go through, see, should this be carried over to the next plan? And if we had any changes to make for these items. Do you all think that's a good use of our time over the next few meetings is to try to get through maybe one or two tabs a meeting and um, look here in this J column and, and make some edits or additions to these um, to then carry them over into the next plan? Personally speaking, I think that was sort of, this is what I was after in the first meeting. I think that's kind of necessary to do that while we're waiting for the state to accept our boundary lines. That work with everybody. I, I think that's a great idea. You got to do it sometime. So, yeah. Can I can I ask you a question? Yeah. So, so Kimberly, you went through the whole plan from two thousand and nine, and and this is a distillation of that. So yes, um, this actually, Jeff, could you talk to the source of this? This came from um, was it was it you that put this together? Or was it Sarah initially? So originally, when the harbor plan was completed in 2009, they created this implementation matrix. And that was the like 10 color coded right. thing that was there. Tara and I kind of updated for the percent done column and the notes column a little bit from where we had some things. And then from that step, Kim cleaned it up took away the color coding. And now for each one of the areas that, like the nine interests that are there, she separated the complete into a separate kind of grouping, the ongoing, and then the not started based upon our update from the 2009 plan. And to make that even more confusing, just to add one more, the matrix that Tara and I updated was the final matrix from the implementation committee right at the end so it wasn't just from the 09 plan it was from like 2011 when they formally disbanded Banded. um that we updated that one and then dave in there as well also updated some of the ones that we didn't have any updates or added some additions to so the column that says completed or ongoing is based on today not something in the past. Correct. Her thing was impossible to. to yes, to the best of our knowledge, it is correct. I'm not saying that it's perfect, but it's close. Um, and then I think the columns that are in gold 
um, are the ones that will hopefully be filling in with a, a yes or no, okay. and then the changes in there. And then I think um, Kim will probably kind of re-update it into something a little bit more consolidated based upon once we get through all of it. So our assignment for May 1st is to go over this thing for the fine tooth comb on our own. Well, I think we can get started to okay. go through. I mean, we have time today. I think we could probably at least tackle just for everyone is kind of doing the same thing, just to maybe try to tackle natural resources first since it's the first one. Cool. And then at least we'll all be kind of reviewing in the same fashion. And then if people obviously want to work ahead, I don't think there's anything that would stop you from doing that. Okay. Leave the way. All right, Kim. All right, great. Okay, so um, we can start up here in the complete area and look at the first one here. So um, let me make it, can you all read that in person? Uh, most of it, everybody in the room, except yes. for Dave yes. has a, a hard copy. Okay, I, good. I have a Dave has his little thing over there. Do you want a hard copy, Dave? No, no. Are you sure? No, no, no. <laughs> Just, can I make one comment? Yeah. Yep. Out of 112 or whatever it was, 118, that it just to belay everybody's questioning on the earlier meetings is it, it worked out to 78 point something percent were either complete or significantly completed. So back to my comment to Kristen last meeting. Um based on the number of action items, I, I think we did pretty good. That's pretty good for anything. You can't even say that about the master plan. Yeah. We don't have 78% of that. I, would, I helped write that. And the only other thing I have to say is I'm, I'm very glad to hear from Jack last time that a lot of this stuff is, is going to be historically, uh, Linda, Linda, I don't know if you caught that question, but I, I had asked Jack because there's so much so much information in the plan that was captured, um, matrices and, and, and numbers of things that will need, some will need to be updated. But when I asked Jack about that, how it moving forward, a lot of the stuff that's in the 2009 plan will be historically referenced and it won't be reprinted in the new plan. There'll be reference to it, but um, so I think the plan, you know, document itself, I think is going to be, it's, uh, I'd like to think considerably smaller, smaller but yeah. uh, a lot of that stuff, the historic stuff that we captured um, will just be a, a, a reference for the future. Well, that makes sense. Get regurgitated again. That makes sense because it's on record anyway. Right. I was just concerned about the two things. One, how do we compare with other communities as far as action items, and how do we carry this many four hundred page document forward? And that's <laughs> uh, those are the answers. Great. Anybody have any comments on what Dave said? Oh. Um, I'm just wondering if it's if it's been completed, Dave. Yeah. And even though we have a reference to it in the updated plan, once it's been completed, we can assume that that we don't have to worry about it, right? I mean, the the item, the goal, the action item was was taken care of, and it's now active. And is that, is that right? Is that making sense? Yeah. yeah. It's active. It, 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 it's it's been implemented or is ongoing. It doesn't mean that, um, I, I, I'll give you the example that we used that, I think that I used that day with Jack was the um, like a, a amount of amount of fuel that's brought by bar, uh, by by the steamship authority or how many passengers, That's that, that was completed, but it, we would update that. We would yeah. say, okay, for the, for, from 2010 to date, now the number average number is this, or yeah. that yearly number. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's been done, but we may we may for some reason 
I mean, I'll, I, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll tie that together for you. When we asked for the money to do the jetties, one of the things that we had to prove was Nantucket is known as a subsistence harbor. In other words, 90% of the goods and services come down the channel. So it's, it, it's, it's reliant upon the channel to get everything here. So we had to prove a number of, of passengers, uh, fuel, uh, propane, you know, uh, and all that stuff to substantiate the 10 million bucks to do the jetty. So that's where, that's where it becomes important that you have that kind of stuff memorialized. Okay. That's great, Phil. Uh, I would like to, uh, I think it would be constructive if when we go through these tabs from the next few meetings, that we also discuss the ones that were complete because there's several members who were not on, don't have any history and uh, it would be efficient that we don't start bringing stuff up and say, oh, we already, already did that. It would be helpful if we all were on the same page knowing what was done and maybe why it was done or whatever. Well, that makes sense because it, it obviously it's in each section what's been completed. It doesn't have to be an extended discussion, but you might as well explain right. it because I was here then and Dave was here then and Peter was here. But several of us were not. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Madam Chair. Uh, Seth? Steve. It Seth or Steve? No, it's Steve. So I, I have a question about once this is in historical, it's been complete, like the first one on the top of that, continue enforcement of existing local and state wetland bylaws. Well, that's certainly still relevant and needs to continue. Do we need to put that in our plan to make sure that that's still of concern, you know, one of the main concerns to us or an important concern? Or does that just stay in the historical reference? Well, that's a good question on that one in particular because of the CONCOM, because it's it's ongoing. Jeff, right. you want to comment about that? Uh, sure. I mean, I, I think when you look at goals like that, and I'll even lump in, there's a little bit one that's a little bit farther down for developing and implementing environmental protection bylaws when possible in the CONCAM. I think that's implicit in their like very charge to do those things and are required to do it. I think it's almost easier to take things like that and you know, have a listing to say, these are the groups that are involved. This is what their role is. Please continue to do that. And I mean, I, I don't know how the CONCOM would function if they weren't doing those things. I mean, they could definitely do more some things, but I think they have to do it. I was, I was <laughs> asking, referring to, you know, the plan that we are creating. I think some of these things should be carried forward and printed in, in the, the updated plan. I think there's a difference between completed and ongoing. ongoing. Oh, and so what we ought to do is identify if it's ongoing, it shows up in the the new one. The new one. If it's completed, it's in the appendix. Yeah. Can Can I ask a question too? Yeah. And this is just more of a philosophy question. Is it worthwhile having goals that? truly can never be completed <laughs> no. no i mean that's the thing right like because we know we have the wetlands protection act i don't think that's a goal that's ever achievable oh. if you say come come do your job like <laughs> there's no goal that they're they have to do it i mean I, I just i appreciate that it was in the previous plan and this i guess will be my soapbox speech for the the process here is <laughs> i'm not sure if that's a goal more so is it's a identification of a role within the plan. Those, you're right. Those things could theoretically be pulled out and put into an appendix or an addendum that these are the entities that are involved with enforcing the Wetlands Protection Act. These are the, you know, the police, you can identify everybody's role separate from putting them in the matrix because that's where you're headed. Because you have to do that. The cops have to do that. You have to do that. You know, so there's, it shouldn't probably be in here. I got, I catch your drift. Does anybody have any comments about that? I just think that, you know, con I mean, continue enforcement of existing local and state wetlands bylaws. If that's the case, then we're, there's a whole lot that needs to be listed and put in there. Yeah. We don't need to put that in there because those laws exist and we know that that's going to continue.
it's going to continue because it's those are the bylaws and the concom is going to take care of that we it doesn't need to be there yeah we're it's making good. note of it but in a separate that's what i'm saying in a pull those things out in a separate appendix that yep. said these are the these are the yep. entities that are involved yep. with x yep. y and z you know the marine department is involved with this the, the you know shab yep. all these other entities that are in stakeholders can be put into a separate thing and taken off of goals and objectives because well, they're not really goals and objectives well, one, one thing, it, it, and, and maybe and this is just thinking out loud, but maybe it doesn't need to be in a separate appendix. Maybe in the in the beginnings of the plan, where it breaks out who's responsible for what, those things could be added there. Okay. So when you when you look at the conservation commission, it would say you know enforcement of this and bring the you know and it would just it would be there. And then, so somebody picking up the plan looks at it and they go, "Well, what, what, what's the concom role in all this?" Well, read the read the concom section, and it would tell you. But, but to your point, Linda, you're right, and Jeff, it, it doesn't, it shouldn't be a goal moving <laughs> forward. It it should be listed as a as a task or a uh, ongoing, not not even ongoing task, just a, a charge that that's what they do. Or it's their role. It's yeah. their role. That's the, the stakeholders' role. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I think it's more of a reiteration of, of so if someone is picking this up for the first time and didn't see the old one. They know that this is you know a topic of concern that we have looked at. Yeah, Madam, good. Madam Chair. Yeah, Seth. Um, yeah, some of this is a problem with how the recommendations were actually written at that time, because really there some of these are listed as large goals, and then some of them are specific actions. Like if you go into number eight, support and enhance the Nantucket Biodiversity Initiative, that's a goal, but no actions were actually determined how to do that. And yeah. then you go to something like six, uh, ensure that legal assistance is available to Conservation Commission, that's a specific action. So we, we maybe need to revise some of this, figuring out what's a goal and what's, a, what's an action. Um, but I do want to go through some of these because some of them say complete and they were completed in, in some way, like uh, nine, uh, you get to the formation of the Marine Mammal Alliance. Well, yes, that organization was created, but they exist currently as like a completely volunteer, not an organization with very limited funding. So maybe our goal needs to be to help support them in some way financially or from some other capacity, but there are ways that we could look at what these things say and enhance the process with what's going on. All right, well taken. Yeah, we I think that makes a lot of sense. Sarah. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think that as we go through these, you know, and there, there were a lot of recommendations and our hope is to kind of make a more consolidated plan this time around. So I think where there are um, items that we can, you know, tease out like that first one, it's, it's just the charge of the CONCOM. I think that's a good thing to recognize. This does not need to be carried over. We can just clarify this at, in a different part of the plan. Um, and so, yeah, as we go through, we can keep looking at them and kind of evaluating if, if that's something that's good to carry in. Okay, anything else on that first one? Just morbid curiosity, what does the word skunk have to do with any of this? <laughs> it seems to be counterproductive. Oh, skunk. Yeah. Oh, and the estimated cost, I, I think it's yeah. just, there's not necessarily a direct cost to the town that it's just included within existing operations. Then let's use a different word than sunk. It was not my choice of words. <laughs> I have no remember, no <laughs> recollection. I, 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 if you would ask me, I would have told you I had no idea. So can we use include? Is that what we're talking about? Well, I think maybe we we review cost. We can look at it for goals or actions that we actually develop into the new one because this already exists so we can't really yeah. monkey with it too too much but i think i think it's really glad to include that the estimated costs for some of these 
needs to be more clear. Yeah. Phil, do you have a comment? I, I was just saying that I think this is going way down the road when we're finished, but I think that maybe one of the things we should think about when we identify oversight at the end of the conclusion of our work, we should send something around to each of these entities, these organizations, and say, this is what we see as your responsibilities. And before we print final version, we get an agreement that yes, indeed, we CONCOM, this is a legitimate purpose of us. If it's not, that's a point of discussion. That's well taken. <clears throat> well taken, but I think we also need to call in members of SHAB. Right. Find, you know, FinCom, right. whoever, you know, Denise. We need to talk to the Marine Department. We need to talk to everybody individually at some point. We have not just the public hearings, but all the entities in town that are dealing with this stuff and see if there's things that they are missing or they haven't completed or they want in the plan. SHAB. Yeah. SHAB. And so. Marine Department is not really here. Okay. We, we clarified that at a meeting recently, and there was some inadvertent left off some list, but she has committed to participate. Yeah, we went that we talked about that at the first meeting, but I want to make sure. No, I'm talking about just last Tuesday. We, oh, we, good. Because I think we, we, we need to, to do her. that. Yeah, we talked to her here in this room. She's on the water, and the shellfish guys down on Brand Point. They're on the water. I mean, there's a lot of other people yeah. that are out oh, there. Tara's here. Yeah, Tara's here, but there's a lot of other people. Yeah. You know, the scallopers, the this, the that. There's a lot of other people out there that might have something to say about what they want to see happen. Well, we, you know, speaking for Dave um, at SHAB, even though I'm on track, in in preparation for this process starting, we we talked about and are working on suggesting recommendations for things that may not be rep represented yet and then we'll bring those or Dave will bring it to this committee okay. and say hey include these things because we're representing these people who aren't serving on the board but they have issues so it'll all be in the vein of shab great because uh, Jeff is a natural resource guy and I'm representing concom but as we all pointed out concom is a regulatory type of uh, an entity which doesn't necessarily have that kind of boots on the ground kind of thing. Jeff does. Will does. Samantha. Does. Samantha does. So that's what I'm saying. There's I'm here because I'm on the CONCOM. And there is no uh charter fishing association, unfortunately, on the island. So but I'm sure there's some of the charter fishermen that would have something to say. Um so I'm actually on this as a representative of the Fishermen's Council, and that is all encompassing of scallopers, oyster farmers, cohoggers. Right. Charter fishermen, uh, commercial divers, and I guess to a certain degree, even the mooring folks are involved because they're on the water daily. Um, so we communicate with them regularly. So I think what we, those of us who are in these various groups, you've got a large group there to reach out to these guys. Um, I, I had, before we go too far, I had a question on um, the estimated cost column. I agree, the word sunk, I found to be very odd and confusing to me. Um, so I had a request to see, I know that this is way down the road, but as we put together this next plan, what I would love to see is the estimated cost, but also what budget is that coming out of? So, you know, if you tell me that assurance for legal assistance is fee-based, you know, who's paying for it? If it's a sunk cost, I read that to believe that it was coming out of a department's existing budget. But I think in our next iteration of this plan, I would like to know, to me, a, a sunk cost is just too gray. I'm assuming the town is picking up the tab there, but as we make the new plan and what items we're carrying over and newly adding, I think it would be important to note, okay, that this is approximately $20,000 cost, and that is included in the Natural Resources Department Brant Point Hatchery budget, or this is included in the XYZ, you know, a DPW budget. I know that those things are subject to change year over year, um, but I think it's important to recognize approximately where we're getting this funding rather than just sunk and assume it's on the town's tab with really no clarity. So funding, identifying funding sources yeah. for a lot of this stuff is kind of critical. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, great. So back to the matrix here. We sort of um, did the first one. 
And then Jeff, you have any comments on the second one? So that process does exist. I can just run through that. Is the CONCOM does have the ability to charge applicants for third party review. Mm -hmm. um, town council operates a little bit differently, but that that is available to the CONCOM. Well, then we should, you know, that should be in that cost column, you know, just things like that to identify that. Anybody have any comments on the second one? So that would be a no, not needed to carry over. I would recommend that. Yeah. Again, it's part of the state wetlands and protection act local bylaw if they can do that. So great. We butt heads with them now, don't we? Sometimes <laughs> that's okay. Okay. That's why you have boards of people. And obviously BOS has to change. Yes. No more BOS. So I'll be SPs. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the third one. This is interesting. Where are we on that one? And I see you have eight. You it's have eight. Who paid for that? Got Great Harbor Yacht Club on here. So, <laughs> Tara, if I missed something, will you hop in on this? Definitely. All right. So. This originally started, right? And this is what's difficult is back at the time that this started, the Great Harbor Yacht Club had an obligation through their permitting process to fund- to keep the travel lift. Well, beyond the travel lift is they had a, a, a funding mechanism right. through the land council to put together essentially research grants on a yearly basis yep. within the harbor and then vetted through um, kind of a committee they set up that had um, being Peter served on it for a while from a representative from Shab. The Yacht Club had a couple folks. Um, the town had some folks that were on there. Um, Ryan Mitchell had some things. And the makeup kind of changed over time. But that obligation was only for a kind of a 10-year time frame. And then at the end, it stopped. Um, and the Yacht Club decided to continue kind of their program but through their own foundation. So that board through the land council kind of changed configuration and dissolved to some degree. Um, I know we've been working on a, a few different things. I don't know if Tara wants to touch on that, pick up the slack from some of that a little bit. Uh, but then again, there's also um, some other groups that I think are doing that. I think groups like the, the Clean Water Coalition are kind of had their hands in that a bit. And that's a number of those groups again they have um and samantha will tell me i have the wrong number so i won't even try to guess but well into 20 to 30 kind of members of that group um to do it so it's kind of happening but it's evolved kind of organically into something different that's that's on the sheet and they should probably keep this one in and yeah. sort of massage it well um this may be samantha this might have been before your time but this was always a discussion topic at the Shellfish Association. And we were looking to Great Harbor to help, you know, fill up the gap. But I think the Shellfish Association seemed to be, and Samantha, you may disagree, but I think the, the Shellfish Association seemed to be the coordinator of this because that's one of the key purposes uh, of the organization is to, uh, is to support uh, you know, with uh, uh, Val and everybody's scientific uh, 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 investigation. Yeah, and that's another one where, um, you know, Val's program is a perfect example where the Great Harbor Yacht Club Foundation has taken kind of a, a larger step into who they are and what it is that they accomplish. Um, you know, as Jeff mentioned, we, we have the Clean Water Coalition. Um, were involved in a number of things. Um, technically, my seat is on behalf of the fishermen, and Emily Molden's seat on this committee is on behalf of the Clean Water Coalition. Um, and we all still work with Great Harbor Yacht Club pretty regularly, but they they seem to be the ones taking the lead there. If I may, Madam Chair. Yep, Seth. Yeah, I think the intent of the recommendation that's in there from 2007 is at this point really not being fulfilled to the to the words there. There are a lot of great organizations that we've talked about already, but who have more shifted their funk their focus to 
grant making rather than technical advice. When I read this, I read like a independent uh, advisory committee to help review things coming into town committees. And I think that isn't being completed anywhere. And I think this one needs to get continued forward into the this plan. Yeah. We need to massage it. It could be that it gets split into a couple of different areas. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may just chime in real quick. Um, I think it is important, as Seth said, to continue it. You know, it was more of a, like a broad-based um, just way to review technical grants and proposals that were submitted to these organizations that weren't comfortable uh, reviewing them. And so I think that's important right now. The evolution has gone, you know, to a variety of different sources that are interest-based, which is great because we're all trying to accomplish the same goal, but I think it would be really nice to have another board that would be able to review these proposals as, as a whole instead of separately. Well, I, I totally agree, Tara. But what I see the, the, um, the move currently is we're hiring consultants to do those technical reviews so then in the future we can secure funding and permitting to do things i, I use the the sediment transport and the dredging as a, as an example where maybe in the past we would do that in-house now we're, we're we're hiring consultants the the dredging of my common pond. We we were hired a we're hiring a we hired a consultant to tell us the current conditions and and where we should be going in the future. Um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is there there are other people rather than in house or local people in Nantucket. We're contracting that technical assistance out now. And, and and to ed editorialize for one second, I've always thought that the Nantucket Yacht Club should have a similar program as the Great Harbor Yacht Club. They're as good a stewards of the harbor as Great Harbor. Um, and I've always thought that they should be a contributing funding contributor. But anyway, that's that's just an editorial. Comment, but what do you think? What do you think about what I said about us contracting these technical? Don't we seem to be contracting those out more now, as opposed to volunteers, as opposed to staff or volunteers? Yeah, I yeah I agree, Dave. I wasn't necessarily talking about the large, huge projects. I was just talking about the the more local, like scientific oh. proposals that come in and that sort of thing. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. And if I may, Madam Chair, yep. I don't think that um, would take away from the intent of this recommendation anyway. Um, maybe part of the recommendation is to evaluate what expertise can be advised locally and what needs external consultant review. I think in some cases, local is great. In some case, in cases, consultants are needed. But I feel like that all would fall within this recommendation anyways. Okay. But it's, it clearly is something we have to keep in here yep. and flesh out, yep. even if we split it into a couple of different categories. Okay, good talk about that. We have a very tiny line next. <clears throat> yes, and one thing quickly to note, it is um, 155. We wanted to briefly talk about the public meeting. Do we want to do this one and then go over the public meeting quickly and then people can keep taking a look at this before the next meeting. Unless anybody has anything to say about the next three really quickly. Obviously the last one should come out. Mr. Jackson. Well, I have to. Peter. I mean, we're being cut short on something that's vital to this process. Maybe we need a whole meeting dedicated to this. Yeah. So, so we make, so we make strides. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Perhaps the next meeting we make mostly associated to to this and before the next meeting if people want to take a look and go through and make notes on their own um you can do that yeah 
That's pretty extensive. Yeah, but I think this is super helpful and um, I think we already have a lot of good information here. Because even if we just go through the next time and, and star the ones we think need to be discussed and kept in, that'll sort of focus us. Yeah. So we don't go line by line by line if it's not necessary. Yeah. Okay. So what is the, uh, Jack wanted to talk about the public meeting? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, thanks. Um, so as has already been mentioned uh, earlier, the uh, public meeting will necessarily need to be scheduled following um, the uh, response back from CZM on giving us the go ahead to do the do the plan, and that hasn't been submitted yet. So we're pro and uh, Steve McKenna may want to weigh in on timing of that. But once it goes in, uh, CZM will need some period of time to review the the um, the letter that we send them, and then to uh, sign off on uh, the town going ahead with the state approved plan. Um, the meeting would occur after that, and all of the so um, so that's the first note on timing. Uh, the purpose of that meeting, obviously, is to kick off the public participation process for the plan. And I think everybody on this committee has been involved in enough planning processes to know uh, both at the community level, it's um, essential that the public be brought into the process and, um, and understand what's happening and then be able to uh, offer their input onto the plan. And as a matter of fact, the CZM program also uh, would expect uh, that uh, an appropriate and proper public process is uh, conducted as the plan is put together. So that's really the kind of purpose of it. I can imagine that what's going to be required is a number of public meetings, particularly in the early, early phases of the plan as we're trying to um, identify what the community believes are the essential issues that the plan needs to address. So just to, I went back to the 2007 plan to see what we did then. Um, and we we did, believe it or not, six public meetings uh, in the first two months of the planning process. We had uh, one, the first one was held in the Sconset Casino. The second one held, was held in the Madiket Admiralty Hall. And that was to get sort of two sides of things. I know Sconset's nowhere near the harbor, but that was apparently the largest meeting room. Um, and then there was four uh, public meetings that occurred uh, really on a every two week schedule that uh, each meeting was on one or two individual topic areas. Now that's all a reflection of what the committee felt was necessary to do at that time. I would suggest that um, that the um, that we were in a different period of time than uh, people uh, weren't as familiar with what a a harbor plan might take on and what it might do. And also in terms of the ability to hold public meetings these days has changed a little in the last few years. So, so I guess that it, by way of an introduction, just to suggest that clearly we need to conduct a kickoff meeting, invite, you know, as a general meeting to um, notify people that this is occurring, give them a little bit of background, what it's all about, and then invite their uh, initial comments on, on what the committee should be focusing on. And then to the degree that the committee believes that uh, additional meetings are needed to um, either because there's um, interest groups that really want to uh, have an opportunity to input more or whatever it might be, whether some issues are, are more important than others or not, whether you have additional meetings following that to take on those um, to take on those issues. Do you have a timeline, Jack, as to I think the sooner the better that we're going to get um, the boundaries up to the state so we can get it back quicker because we're coming into the summer now? Yeah, I, I, my understanding is it's in Dar uh, Jeff and Tara's hands at this point. Yeah, we were just making some edits, but we'll have those to you today. So. Okay, so yeah. then, Kim, um, that'll then... Yep, then we'll we'll submit it um, likely this week, and um, hopefully that will start the process. And I, I'm not sure once Steve and CZM has it, how long it will take to turn so around. So what's the average time, do you know the average amount of time to respond? I think I would I would ask Steve that Steve McKenna that question. You know, um, we try to just give some basic feedback on the draft, and then once to to make sure that it addresses everything, then it's formally submitted. And that, you know, I, I'm guessing that takes maybe a week, 
And then once it's submitted, um, it gets noticed in the environmental monitor. So it depends on the schedule. That's a every two week publication. So it'll depend on when that is. Then there's a 30 day public comment period and the notice will be issued probably, you know, within two weeks of the close of the um, uh, public comment period. Great, Phil. Uh, th <clears throat> this is a question for Jack. Uh, would it, should we post something online for people that would be interested in the public meeting that could make their comments more productive rather than people just coming in and sort of ventilating on what they think ought to be done or, oh. I mean, I think we want to get that too, but I think, you know, if, if, if we just leave it open to a, an open complaint session, <laughs> that, that doesn't really help us. So we do have, we could overwhelm them with, with, with a couple of Excel spreadsheets, but I, I mean, how do you think this might work to make it more productive? Yeah, uh, th that's a good point. And and when we talk about meetings, that's really only ever one way of 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 getting the public input anyway. So th there's a website for this plan and through which people would be able to comment uh, either, you know, just provide some input on what the plan might want to take on or whether to comment on something that's been drafted at at each period of time. So that process is going to be ongoing throughout you know you'll be you'll be putting on the website various drafts of the sections and that kind of thing and people would be able to comment on that and then but but I think this first meeting either either one meeting or a series of meeting depending on how the committee wants to do it is is the the point of those is to get the input from the general public or those stakeholders in various um uh, issue areas and that uh, people that use the harbor and what they might have to say. It, it really is an essential point part of of doing the plan uh, to be able to get the community's input. People do show up to meetings and have a, a particular complaint. I'm not sure there's a great deal you can do about that. We'll structure the meeting so that you know we, we tell everybody what's going on and then invite comment. Uh, but we can structure it with uh, breakout tables or something to. Um, to, to try to to try to make sure that the time is most effectively used. We did have some of that the first time, Dave, where people came in yeah. and just moaned and groaned about something that really wasn't within our purview. But but Jack, <clears throat> uh, maybe a lesson lessons learned. Um, as you said, we we've, we've all done a, a bunch of public meetings, but you know, lessons learned. I think that if you in, in your initial notice for your initial meeting, if you said uh, a comment that uh, if, if you have specific concerns for what's being done, you know, pick a, pick a topic, harbor management, operations, natural resources, non-com, uh, how it affects resiliency. If you said in the beginning that you know, the committee, the committee members, Linda Williams represents the Conservation Commission. If you have Conservation Commission issues, contact Linda Williams and awesome. attend attend the meeting on June 18th. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? If you if you broke it out that way, I, I think because you have a good cross section, a good representation of each faction and what their specific forte is, then the, they would have, the people would have a, a, a second and third tier level. You know, you use me if you want. You know, Dave Franzuto represents the Shellfish Harbor Advisory Board. I'm sorry, it's the Harbor Shellfish Advisory Board, but I'm an old man, it's Shab. <laughs> um, the, the, and, and you can contact him at, at this contact information attend a SHAB meeting, or come to the meeting on June 18th. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Yep. We could also have something online when we do do online. Do we have a budget for advertising and stuff? Yes. Okay. So that's good. Because we can always put stuff up on Nantucket Current or the other one or something where people can be driven to a website and they could type in what their concerns are, what they're involved with. And we can call those out um, ourselves which would keep them from 
coming into a meeting and tying up something for a half an hour because somebody has green grass. We know that's an issue. If you have green grass within 50 feet of the water, they're using something they're not supposed to. So there's all kinds of stuff that people are going to um, come in and complain about. But if they do it online, we can control the access to us. And, and, so and people, that. some, especially with this day and age with computers and the website and Zoom meetings and that sort of thing, they feel they may feel more compelled to contact Peter Brace specifically because you know they have maybe they have a report with Peter. Or, or he's got a, a specific thing that he's champion that, that they can buy into. You know what I'm saying? It's it's mm -hmm. and, and that would help as far as as far as your comment, Bill, where somebody just comes and vents. You may be able to weed some of that out and be more focused, mm -hmm. is kind of where I'm headed with this. And I, I want to say that it, it, there's also a lot to be said for having people here in person because they can make their comment online, but then that comment is static. If they're here, they say something, then we can say, can you clarify that for me? Do you have any more that you want to add to that? It's it, it, so we want we want live bodies, whether they're on the screen or they're here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, multiple points of contact. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Um, we have to do every, especially every single opportunity for people to comment. And I, I think the yeah. Zoom thing has, it, it has been a benefit. I, I, to my own personal yeah. opinion, I think it's been a benefit to the public process because it, you know, how many people you have on the screen right now? Ten. Those are those are ten folks that didn't have to come here today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess that, that's I guess that's a question. Uh, could you could you imagine a in person meeting? A lot, you know, large hopefully large in person meeting, obviously augmented by the uh, the ability to zoom into the meeting as well. I mean, is that what's been happening out on the island now? All of our meetings are like that, except for today's planning board, because they had to wait for the governor. They had to post it so many days in advance. They had to wait for the governor to approve it on the thirty first. But almost every meeting here is both except concom we are just zoom at the moment but every other meeting the board of selectmen the historic district commission trust all those guys are are yeah. both shab both is correct when the when the coastal resilience advisory committee was creating the coastal resilience plan our first open house that we had for you know the public there were like 162 people there yeah. on i mean granted it was covid but there were that many people online listening um having things to say so it just gives the people more flexibility yeah so, yeah madam I, Chair. I yeah. oh go ahead son. So, um yeah so i mean I, I think the idea to have some in-person meetings and some virtual or some hybrid is is good i think that um i'm all for like having other types of online engagement as well but i think if if at the in-person meetings rather than everyone just sitting in a room and raising their hand and talking about whatever they wanted, which is going to get to Phil's concerns. You know, each of the um, items that's in that Excel spreadsheet, each of the tabs, that's like a focus area, right? So we could split all those focus areas out into different work groups, breakout stations, whatever. And then there could be somebody facilitating that mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. Then The people that care about those things, or maybe they care about multiple things that can go back and forth, well, let's say mm -hmm. I only care about natural natural resources. I'll go and hang out with that group and give all my comments to them. Someone only cares about uh, uh, tourism. They'll go to the tourism and work with that facilitator. And that way we'll be able to do, you know, nine times the amount of work in the same amount of time. So I really recommend doing that type of workshop thing for the public meetings yep i agree cool. seth and that's ex and that's the, typically the way we, we would do it to have breakouts and allow people to go to the areas that they have an interest in well we're going to get a lot of interest because we're doing this over the summer yeah and then in the fall when people yeah, start you to, can you can you can reach out to the nansa and civic league and, and get since all their members will be here, then you know if it's if this public meeting happens in the summertime, then we can get all of those twenty-five area associations hopefully interested. That's a great, and they typically are active during the summer months. Yeah, well, they all I mean, have meetings. That's right. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, I think this. I think this happened the last time we did it. I think yeah. I remember that. Because I remember yeah. going to the surf side. Well, yeah. We, we just engaged them in a, an initiative that Shab is working on, and uh, they they're more than willing to help and get the word out. Yeah. yeah. Great. The point one is is really impacted by this kind of thing. So they meet uh, at least once, or I think they meet twice in the summer because yeah. I had to go to one of those meetings. Good. Okay. Yes, so in general, I mean, is there a, I, I guess June would be in a sense ideal uh, if if the timing and everything goes well. Um, and it sounds to me what you're all saying is the summertime is a fine time to ho hold meetings. I mean, people have a lot going on, but there's no, no reason why that wouldn't, why that wouldn't occur during June, July timeframe, right? Yeah, we just have to pick different times because a lot of the fishermen you know that yep. yeah sh shameless plug for the fishermen um <laughs> june is a maybe july and august is an absolute no for that group of guys okay so when we're looking at getting these meetings on the calendar um if that could be one of the sooner rather than later ones sure. um that would be amazing just you know as they start to get busier and busier well kim that that might be worth thinking about is is trying to get the fishermen together if in june i mean just make that just yeah. like that, it's something that we need to do. Yeah, and we should vary the times of the day because yeah. I've, I've been involved with some of these kinds of things before, where you have a day meeting or an afternoon meeting, and you have a night meeting, because eventually you'll capture almost everybody between the different times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah we, we we can do whatever you need us to do. We sort of rely on the committee to tell us what will work in their particular community. And, and and Linda, what you're saying is exactly what we need to hear. So varying times is important because people have different obligations and that kind of thing. And then and then the fact that the fishermen June will work for them, but later won't. So th that's all really good input in, in yeah, terms speak, of us thinking speak. about how we're going to schedule this. I want to say that as a fisherman, once once school public schools get out, in Massachusetts third week of of June, you know, charter fishermen are booked solid through okay. the third week of August. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so now I'm in the tourism industry. So between Memorial Day weekend and then say the middle of the September, middle of June, you know, it's a bit of a lull. And like Steve just said, people are, our kids are getting out of school, people are getting active, and, and but they're not as engaged as they would be from the middle of June all the way till the middle of October. So I'd recommend we do it somewhere in that period, those first two weeks. First two weeks of June. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Well, we, you get the, then you get the film festival and all that other stuff happening. Yeah, yeah. That, that's probably going to work out. We get that notice in. Okay. All right, okay, we'll, good. we'll shoot for that and try to make some progress before the next meeting on on looking what, at what a structure will look like and um, think about meeting space and all of that. Well, you can get if you can get. Jeff can check to see if you come up with a date. Jeff can check to see if the um, the conference, you know, the auditorium thing over at the police station is available because that has the capability of doing Zoom as well as in person. That and would I can be fit important. More people in there. Yeah, it seats like 125. Yeah. Okay, good. Great. Great. Hopefully we can get the notice to proceed process dealt with by then. It sounds yeah. like from what Steve was saying that we're talking minimum one and a half to two months for the whole thing to go so <laughs> i hope we can get early mid-june but we can actually we can really it. submit that like right away yeah we can actually have the meeting probably just as an informational here we are introductory meeting without waiting for the state to come back with it and see what's out there yeah you absolutely could yeah 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 why don't, so why we, don't we just do that why don't we just plan that First two weeks in June. Yeah, Linda. One thing I was thinking about: if if you did have the meeting at Fort Fairgrounds, what you could do is you could do the the meeting in the auditorium looking thing, and then you could get the training room and do your breakout sessions there, where people could have stuff uh, spread out. Because the, the well, meeting, they won't meeting, let us in the training room anymore. Period. Really? That it's was Charlie. Very difficult. To Charlie decided that them. nobody's allowed to use it anymore. Right, well, I'm just saying. Well, then, then my comment is, is that that auditorium-looking room is not conducive to breakout sessions. No, no. So we I'm might just 
speak talking out loud here. We might not do that the first meeting though. That would be a maybe a. You know where meeting. we might be able to that has facilities too is I'd be interested. I'd, I'm happy to talk to them. Is both of the yacht clubs have big rooms that are more conducive to that? Then I think they both have the ability to do that now. Yeah, but were there people check. all there? The patrons, the members the all there, or the school? Maybe the school. I, well, they won't let us do it until school is out. We can. Troubleshoot a space. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Right. Try now. But no, that's a great idea. Big ballroom at uh, Nantucket Hotel. I, Mark may be amenable to doing that, and it's handicap accessible. Yeah. There's a few choices. Yeah. We'll definitely kick the tires on those. We have okay. a couple weeks to try to solve that. Okay, okay good. Oh, and and time of day, any any um, suggestions? After five. After five. Okay. If we're trying to get the biggest bang for the buck with the guys that are out there, yep, you know, getting ready for fishing and whatnot. I think it would have to be after five. Okay. Anybody got any comments about that? And just make sure that when you do that, say in the um, information that we're getting out, you know, if you can't make a meeting, here's the link to go and leave the comment. Here's the here's the Zoom. So you can zoom in later. Here's here's the person you can talk to. Right. And then here's, and afterwards, make sure that, I mean, they get the link um, to it being on Zoom so they can go watch it. Yeah. And they got a YouTube part. That YouTube is always part of those links. Yeah. But will, the, will the public meetings be recorded too? So if someone can't, they can see what's there. So there may be their questions will be answered. So no, we can arrange for TV 18 to be there. To Not take. in the ballroom. Okay. Yeah, Okay. All right. That's why the town, I mean, it won't, like, town is all set up for that. It won't live stream, but you okay. could certainly. But then we won't have any stuff. Zoom participation. That's my worry. Well, the question. I think. The, go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. I was going to say, I think all those facilities now have the capability to do both. But what I'm saying is, you may be able to Zoom, but to run it back on YouTube. It may be served better to have some level of editing before TV 18 from TV 18 before it gets okay. posted to YouTube. So it's not disjointed. Steve, did you have a comment? Yeah. So I was just wondering if we're not going to be doing breakout sessions for this first meeting, we're specifically, you know, talking about this first meeting now, then the 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 select board room at the police station would probably work fine. Yeah. I think we need to see what the lay of the land is first before we start. Doing more specific breakouts. Well, we'll see. Okay. Any other Thank comments you. about the the public meetings? No. Okay. Very good. Right. Where are we now? That's the end. Oh, next <laughs> steps. All I think we already did that. Okay. Anything else, anybody? And put down um, members' comments on here also. I'll I'll just email that to her. We do that at the compound. Yeah, um, the meetings that we've already had prior to the the one I did minutes for the last time, the twenty eighth, whatever it was. Um, where are those minutes? Have they been approved, and have they gone to the town clerk's office for our last two meetings? Meetings prior to that. There's different requirements now for posting minutes. Oh, we approved them. We did approve them. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll double check to see where they okay. ended up with. Okay. Okay. Anything else from anybody? Good meeting, guys. Somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? Dave Sorry. made a motion to adjourn. Peter seconded. Um, Desi? Aye. Steve? Aye. Seth? Aye. Is that all that's up there? Because you yep. have the arrow up there. Okay. Peter? Aye. Dave? Phil? Oh, uh, yes. So, yes. Samantha, are you up there? Samantha, aye. Okay, great. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you in uh, three Steve, weeks. Steve McKenna, give me a call. Will do. Thank you. See you guys. You owe me lunch. <laughs>